Alright, Vol fans. Alright, SEC fans. Catfish here, bringing it to you live from the Volunteer Roadshow Studios in Birmingham, Alabama. I'm going to start a new uh, video series called The Legends of Fall, where I select the greatest player in team history from each SEC school. And these are catfish's selections, so you may disagree with them, but they're the ones that I remember and who I think are the greatest in, in history. I'm going to start with the four teams in the playoffs, Alabama, Georgia, Clemson, and Oklahoma. Please sit back and enjoy this presentation of Legends of Fall. And this first video is going to be about a player from Alabama who I think is the most dominant player I've ever witnessed. He, he hails from Miami. He was born on January 1st, 1967. He was a six foot three, 250 pound linebacker. And he laid the wood on quarterbacks all over the SEC. He was drafted in 1989 in the first round and the fourth pick. He was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 2014. He was a 1988 Buckus Award winner and an All-American. And alongside Cornelius Bennett and Keith McCants, they had one of the best defenses in the country. He had a season where he had 27 sacks and his career at Alabama, he had 52 sacks. He went on into the NFL to play for the Kansas City Chiefs where he amassed an astounding 126 and a half sacks. He was the 1989 Rookie of the Year and also was selected to the Pro Bowl. And I'm speaking of none other than the late, great Derek Thomas. And the thing that I remember was his heart and he had a big smile. Every time I seen him on the sideline, he had the biggest smile you ever want to see. It was almost like Magic Johnson. It was infectious. And everything that I know about him is that his action matched his big heart. He was an unbelievable philanthropist. Um, I just read the other day where they opened a charter school in Kansas City named after him, the Derek Thomas Academy. And So sit back and enjoy these clips I put together for you for the late, great Derek Thomas. While the 80s belong to Lawrence Taylor, the new decade will be dominated defensively by Derek Thomas. Certainly a guy who has all the qualities to rush the quarterback and a very natural pass rusher. He's got an air of excitement about him. He loves to play the game, and he plays the game relentlessly. You never realize how quick someone is until you watch film on them, and you see what they're doing, and then you watch film on him, and you see him just blowing by guys and them not even getting their hands on them. I mean, that's tremendous. Intimidating. <laughs> Ruthless. You love to watch this young guy go in the backfield and just cause havoc with quarterbacks. Something that they haven't had here in Kansas City in a very long time. And it's nice to see that there is someone who has that mentality of ripping someone's face off, and that's Derek Thomas. The only thing that would ever limit Derek would be himself. Uh, he has great skills. As long as he maintains a sense of pride, he can be an outstanding linebacker. Derek Thomas became an instant success in the NFL because of the highly polished pass rushing skills he developed at the University of Alabama. <laughs> Thomas not only followed in the footsteps of his predecessor, Cornelius Bennett, he created even bigger footprints, and his crimson shadow was cast over every opponent. Shadows that grew as much from hard work as God-given talent. I can't even tell you how big my heart is because I'm, I consider myself as a winner, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to win. If it takes playing 65 minutes, I'll play 65 minutes. I'll never quit.
Pass rushing to me is like a bat getting the ball. The defense has to stop that back. And for me, it's like I'm a running back and I have the ball and they have to actually stop me. And I think sometimes I, I utilize some of the moves that a back would use in order to get there. You get to that point to where you say, well, he's in sight. And at that point, you just lock him in and, and go for it. The highly motivated pass rusher registered an NFL record 30 sacks in his first two seasons. In 1990, Thomas sacked quarterbacks 20 times. And on November 11th, he set an NFL single game record with an amazing performance against the Seattle Seahawks and quarterback Dave Craig. He's back to throw. Hit the goal line, ball charge free, fumble, recovered by Kansas City, touchdown Kansas City. Oh, what a play! I was thinking that probably the Seahawks are going to be looking for a new left tackle because uh, it was a long afternoon for him. Right back to pass on first down. In trouble and down he goes. Derek Thomas got him. After I got the, the first two on my first two rushes, I had two sacks. And I said that this, this could be a remarkable day. Derek, good job. Coach just kept making the calls and kept putting me in a position to where I could utilize what I do best. You got him up the field once, you got him inside once, didn't you? Good. Keep working on him. Now you ought to get him right. He'll be rocking on you. Come on, Derek. Come on, Derek. Run it down. When I got two and then three and then four and then everybody was like, well, go for the record and five. And the, the sixth one was a funny one because the play went away, and I thought the quarterback had already thrown the ball. And I was just really standing there in the corner, and I see the quarterback coming back across the field. So I ran and got a sack. That was a freebie. So that was number six. Out to his right, looking down the field, and Thomas sacks him again. Another sack for Derek Thomas. What's new? And then number seven came, and then it was like, you got the record. It was like shooting fish in a barrel. But like any fish story, it was the one that got away that proved to be the biggest. The thing I most remember about that game is the sack I didn't get. And that's the one that still haunts me. Derek Thomas is a key here. See if he can put the heat on him. Last play of the ball game. Snap to Craig. Back to pass. Derek Thomas comes in, and Craig breaks the tackle of Thomas. Craig throws in the end zone. It's caught. Touchdown, Seattle. I don't believe it. Touchdown, Seattle. No. I tell you what I liked about what he said after that game. Even though he had seven sacks, set the NFL record, he says, the sack that I didn't get, which was the last play of the game in which they, uh, Craig got out and threw the ball for a touchdown to beat us on, that he said that's the one he'll remember the most. And that's the type of player you really want on your football team. And I know he, he means that. There's only going to be a few people ever that's the best at what they do. And, you know, right now, Lawrence Taylor is the best. And one day, I want to achieve that status. I want to be the best linebacker in the NFL. LT, the 90s belong to DT. He was a guy that could change a game. Uh, he was a game swinger. You know, that uh, one guy that could change the outcome of the game at any given point in time. During the course of every game, the opposing offense had to account for Derek Thomas. When he went out, he always played at a level, and you always knew that he was going to play at a level that was going to bring everybody else's level up. Derek had the ability, and he used it to the fullest, and, you know, uh, it was a shame that, you know, he left us so soon. I heard, oh, he's just a sacker. Yeah, but you know what? When you turn the ball over, you literally change the momentum of the game. That's what I call a Hall of Fame, a guy that can literally change the momentum of the game. And that was Derek Thomas. You know, I just remember him just being, you know, just that smile all the time. And, and uh, you know, even when, before the game, everybody's all intense, especially defensive guys, real intense and real focused. 
And, you know, he'd always be laughing and, and kind of joking around. And, you know, I, I remember thinking to myself, you know, how, how can he be ready to play all the time? You know, because he never seemed like he was intense or, or mad or angry. He just went out and played, you know, in practice and training camp. We'd be dead tired and he was always running around happy. They'd go play golf in between practices. He would always have that big smile on his face, you know. Uh, he'd come off the field, he was smiling. He was uh, on the in, the, in the huddle, he was smiling. But there were several times he got really angry, you know. He just got, he, he just got that rage about him. You know, when you knew we were in some big games, it was come playoff time or, or against the Raiders uh, when they came to, in, in the AFC uh, wild card game to Kansas City. And, and you could see him, and, and it was a fun way to see him because you always saw the big jovial smile. When you think of linebackers and Derek Thomas, and you think of the Kansas City Chiefs and the history behind it, and I think that's what he's going to leave for us. Uh, you know, other linebackers, you know, have to measure up to Derek Thomas. If you were to talk, if you were to see Derek and talk to Derek today, it's all about team, you know. And the one thing you will find out about Derek is that the way he played is the way he worked. Even during the off season, even during practice, everything he did, you know, he, he did full go. I hope you enjoyed that presentation of the late, great Derek Thomas. I'm going to be featuring other legends of fall in the very near future, so thanks for watching. And before I go, I would like to wish three special people a happy birthday. I've got a Georgia fan, John, from Georgia, that has a birthday on the 10th. Happy birthday, buddy. And I also have a father-daughter birthday I'd like to wish out there to David and Lily Mae. Um, Lily Mae was born on her father's 30th birthday. She's eight years old now. And Lily Mae, happy birthday. Happy birthday to your father. And thanks for watching the show. So thanks for tuning in. We're going 15 and 0. I promise you that. All right?